Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Not E Thursday, E Tuesday on Kathy Mole Ministries. And if you got the notification this morning and you are here, please say hello in the comments to let us know that you are with us. And um, okay, so we're here. And this afternoon, um, I'm going to give you a bit of time to get on. Um, yeah, I'll give give Megan Hope. Nice to see you. I trust you're doing well. Um, I'm going to give some people time to, to get on and to join us. I see some more people are joining in. Matthew J. Mole is here. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so this afternoon, I'm going to be speaking to you about something that I feel is very important. Um there are some more people here who need to say hello in the comments. Don't be shy. We like to know who is watching us. Um, last Tuesday, Georgie Peters, nice to see you. And I like the smiley face and the sunflower and all the hearts going up. Um, <laughs> Liesl Giles. Marinda Stefan is from UK. It's always nice to have the nations coming on board, on board the flight. And so last Tuesday afternoon, I did a session where I invited people to ask questions. Um, I think it was around hearing from God. I'm not even sure what it was about, but we had a good time. I answered some questions. Genevieve Bailey, nice to see you. I see you've been traveling around a bit, taking photographs. Jane Middleton, always good to see you. Mona Smith, good afternoon. Um, Jane I'm always glad when I see your name pop up because you are the one who, who takes note of all the scriptures and you, you type the scriptures in the comments so everybody can keep up. Lofuno, nice to see you too. Um, yeah, Lizelle Giles, it's nice to have you with us. So Okay, so numbers are going up nicely. Um, this afternoon, I'm going to speak to you about... Um, Paradigms and pivotal moments. It sounds very intellectual, um, using big words there, but I feel it's important. It's a very important season, uh, and it's important that we make those shifts. And as we go along this afternoon, I will give you an understanding. Um, Genevieve Bailey, I'm still in De Calders. Yeah, I know, but I see you have been out and about with your parents, taking photographs, you went somewhere to celebrate, I think it was your birthday, you see you can't get away with anything these days on social media, we see where you go, we see what you do, if you like me and you post every single thing up that you do, every time you go for a walk on the beach, um, there are photographs, so um, it's great, that's what we like about social media, so I can have you in my home here this afternoon, um, I have Lily here again, she's sitting in her bed, so she might pop up here next to me and make an appearance. Um, and also, I have asked Matthew to do a worship song for us. And um, he's very happy to do a worship song. If you joined on Sunday morning, Rory did a message, um, yeah, it was Sunday morning. Just spontaneously, the three of us were sitting in the lounge and spontaneously Rory said, I think we should go online. And so it was like about an hour to plan. And then there were technical difficulties and, and the whole thing had to be changed. But you can still catch it on Rory's group, Prophetic Equipping School, if you're part of that group. Um, and Matthew led some worship. So, yeah, Georgie Peters, it is awesome. Fontini Wilters, nice to see you from Joburg. So... The early birds who got on now um, are gonna, going to have Matthew Mole leading us live in worship. So the reason I've asked him to do it is not just so he can put on a show, but we believe he has an anointing in the area of worship, and worship is part of um, it's his lifestyle. So, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you for tagging Susan there, Fontini. So as he worships, I just want... Um, you to open your hearts and uh, let God set the stage for what he wants to say to you today. I believe you're going to be comforted and encouraged um, to trust God for the over and above. So I'm going to ask Matthew to come on now, and then I will see you in a few minutes. So if you like, you can tag some people 
um, who you know need to be encouraged this afternoon. Tag your friends, get them uh, to join us, and let's see what God does this afternoon. So here's Matthew, and he's going to lead us in some worship. I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, you're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, you know just what to do, yeah. I look to you and I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you and you're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom and you know just what to do. And I will love you. Lord, my strength, and I will love you, Lord, my shield, and I will love you, Lord, my rock, forever, all oh, my days, I will love you, God. God, I look to you, and I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. And God, I look to you, and you're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, and you know just what to do. And I will love you. Lord, my strength, and I will love you, Lord, my shield, and I will love you, Lord, my rock, forever, all my days, I will love you, God, and hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns, and hallelujah, our God reigns, forever all my days, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, that you are our rock and our strength. And Lord, I want to thank you for Matthew. <laughs> thank you, Matthew. That was really amazing. Um, we put him to good use here while he is here. And um, yeah. So, that was great, eh? Um, yeah, so it's so good that we can say um, God is with us. Um, we, God, we look to you. I won't be overwhelmed because it's easy to become overwhelmed at the moment. Yeah, what a blessing. Georgie Peters, Elizabeth Welsh, nice to see you. And Jackie Holmes is here too. So yeah, it's, it's so good that we can say we won't be overwhelmed no matter what's coming our way. 
that God is right here and we worship him and he's our rock and our strength. And so, okay, thank you, Matthew. Um, I just need to know, is the sound okay with this uh, on the side? Okay, thank you. My sound man's given me the thumbs up. And so let's get into it. Um, I want to say, I want to start out by saying I have a prayer request, uh, not for myself, but for a lady who always joins the online things. Her name is Renee Ibe. Maybe you know her. She was taken to a hospital. She has COVID and she has pneumonia and she's been transferred to a different hospital. Um, I don't know where she was originally, but she has been transferred and she's requesting prayer. So if you will add Renee Ibe to your, your prayer list, there are a lot of prayers going out already, but the more we pray, the more things get shifted in the spiritual realm, and we just continue to speak life, and everybody else is struggling. I know there's some leaders in, in a church in East London who need our prayers, and there are lots of friends and family members out there who need the church to pray for them, to stand in the gap. Um, so, yeah, so we pray for Renee Ibe today, and we trust you, Lord, for a good outcome. We trust you, Lord, for that she comes out with a testimony, that she encounters your goodness and your strength and your healing wherever she is right now. And we say, it's your breath in our lungs. You know, we, say, we sing that song from a while ago, and um, it's God's breath in our lungs. And so, yeah, some more people. Janice De Brain, nice to see you. Yeah, thanks, Elizabeth. Those powerful prayers that you pray. Elizabeth Welsh, keep on praying, and we will see God move on behalf of his people. Yonanda Mulman, nice to see you too. And um, yeah, okay, so let's get into it. I said I'm going to speak to you today about paradigm sh paradigms and pivotal moments. And so this is what a paradigm shift is. I'm sure you've heard it, but let me give you some something that sounds intelligent. Because it's, uh, I had to Google the, the definitions of what these words mean. A paradigm shift is a fundamental change in approach or underlying assumptions. And I know that a lot of us, we, yeah, thank you, Jane, healing for Renee. Um, we, um, when it comes to needing God to do a miracle, we are right, many times, we're right on the edge of seeing the breakthrough or seeing the miracle, but the voice of the enemy is so much louder in that moment. But we don't realize that just over the threshold is the miracle God wants to give us. And um, so when we begin to look at our lives as um, it's always a struggle, and we forget that just beyond that, beyond the challenge, is the greatest miracle God wants to give us. And we change our approach to it. We change our underlying assumptions. We just assume it looks too difficult. It's never going to happen. So how are we going to get out of this thing? And we make a choice to change, to shift our thinking to what God is about to do, the expectation of what he's about to do. And then we find that we come out from the place of living under the circumstances and being beaten down by the sound of the enemy. You know, those wheels behind us, the thunder cloud, not thunder cloud, the dust cloud of the chariot wheels coming behind us. And all the time God's saying, just keep your eyes on me. The, the miracle is here. And, and when I thought about that, I thought that the Israelites at the Red Sea, <coughs> sorry, the Israelites at the Red Sea were right there on the edge of the miracle that we know God did for them when he parted the Red Sea. Mm. Just got to have a sip of my holy water. And so there are many people in this time who are standing at the, on the banks of the Red Sea and they're in between a rock and a hard place. But we know Jesus is our rock. Uh, we just sang that song, I won't be overwhelmed. Um, and so... We're standing in this place of looking ahead, but we hear the sound of the enemy. Like the, the Israelites, I cannot imagine what, what it must have been like. They thought they had escaped the enemy. And there they were, hearing the sound of the, the Egyptians coming behind them. And all they could see in front of them was the Red Sea. And you know, 
<laughs> when I googled this, I found that there was a scientist who tried to explain it away by saying it was a weather change that caused the Red Sea to part. But it was a one-day weather change. That already is a miracle. Even if God used the weather, it was still a miracle. There is no way you can explain that away. That for the time the Israelites walked across on dry ground, and then the Egyptians came along and they were drowned. That was a miracle. And so I want to say to you that I know that there are a lot of people, if you've only joined in now, you missed the amazing worship song that Matthew did for us. But you can always watch to the end now and then go back and catch up on it. Um, <clears throat> and so I know that there are many people who are standing in this place of, I don't know where my miracle is. And all God is saying is, just as Moses said right there, with the sound of the enemy approaching, Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And so this is, this is why we need to have this paradigm shift, that we don't live according to assumptions that are underlying, that are in our belief system, that here we go again. It's never going to happen for me. That Red Sea cannot be parted. I'm just going to live in this place of... of you know, stress and anxiety because nothing is changing. And I believe when we live in a season of the miraculous, when we live in a season where God is moving in ways that, he, that, that, that are unusual to us, um, then we need to expect to see Him do unusual things. And so we need to, the shift that needs to be made in our lives and in our thinking is from what can we see with the natural to what do we believe? Do you believe that God can bring your breakthrough, even though all you see is the Red Sea in front of you? Do you really believe it? I think what I want to do is, no, we'll look at the Red Sea later on again. Um, Anita, Carly, nice to see you as well. So I want to take you to a scripture in Matthew 6.33, and this is how the paradigm shift is going to change in our thinking. And it's a daily thing. I want to tell you, nobody has got this down with, with an honors or master's degree. Every single day we have to make the choice to change what we can see in the natural and what do we believe because God has said. Or if you haven't got a prophecy, uh, well, because of what the scriptures say and all the testimonies in the, all, you know, right through the Bible of the goodness of God and the miraculous interventions of God. And so, um, okay, so here's my scripture, Matthew 6.33. It says, the seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And the ones above, before Matthew 6.33, were about the daily, the needs we have on a daily basis. And so that word seek comes from a Greek word that means this. And they're very uh, simple, obvious meanings, but there's a reason I'm giving you this scripture now. The word um, the Greek word for the word seek um, is Z-E-T-E-O. I'm not going to try and pronounce these words. The other two are so difficult, I won't even give them to you. But it means this, to seek in order to find, to, to seek a thing. To seek in order to find out by thinking, meditating, reasoning, and to inquire into, and to seek after, to seek for, to aim at, and to strive after. So, when, when we get this instruction to seek first the kingdom of God, a lot of people don't know what, what, how, what are we doing here. What are we to, Because to seek is to look for something in order to find it. And if we are instructed to seek first the kingdom of God, then it means we are going to find it. Because God would not say, Jesus would not say, seek first the kingdom of God if he did if he thought, we would never be able to find it. Now, we know the kingdom of God is within us. The kingdom of God is where God is in charge. God is on the throne. God is governing his way. We're allowing him to move in our lives in the way that he needs to. And we've taken our hands off and we said, God, your kingdom come. Your will be done. And then when we say that, we say, God, you do it your way. You do it the way it's written in the scriptures, you do the way that you know is better than I know how to do. And this way, we're going to have a shift in our thinking because we are seeking, we're meditating, we, we are seeking in order to find. And, and I think the biggest key for you and I, if we need a shift, and if we're needing to 
cross that Red Sea um, and to see God do a miracle for us, to see a breakthrough for us, we need to say, God, your kingdom come. I'm seeking your, um, I'm seeking the kingdom. I'm seeking your way. The kingdom is actually the governance of God, the lordship of Jesus, the way he wants to do it. He's number one. His ways are priority. And I'm going to follow his instructions. Just like Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord your God. I want to see God so that when I feel anxious about something, when I feel um, a need for a breakthrough or, or I want to, I'm praying for somebody else, I don't just want to jump in and do what I think I should do because I've done it before and it worked. I want to say, God, I'm seeking your ways now. How do I pray for Renee Ibe today? Um, I can pray in tongues I can, because I don't know what to say. I can bind and loose and I can prophesy over her. But I first want to go to God and say, God, I'm seeking the kingdom so that you can add to me the wisdom and the strategy that I need to pray this thing through so I see your ways come through. So the other word, it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness is a very um, important thing because standing on the banks of the Red Sea and then um, you hear the enemy behind you and you can't see any way out, the devil's going to say to you, who do you think you are? Why should God rescue you? Why should God answer your prayers? And then it's difficult to stand still and wait until that moment. Remember I said many people are on the verge of a, a miracle, on the edge of a breakthrough. And to in that moment when you're waiting for God to come through, to be able to stand still knowing that you're going to see the salvation, the rescuing, the power of God in action, um, you know, knowing that, can we stand still? And, you know, it wasn't just stay in one place. Don't move because you're going to scare the Holy Spirit away or something. Stand still means be at peace. Don't say anything. Be at peace. I think actually there is a translation where he said stand still. Hold your peace. There's a translation that says that. In other words, be quiet. Let God do what he wants to do in your, to your brain, to every fiber in your, your nervous system. You want to turn and run. The flight, you know, the instinct to run away is going to kick in. And, and all God says is hold your peace. Stand still. Because in this moment when all you can hear are the wheels of the enemy coming after you, I'm going to do a miracle that only I can do. And when the enemy is saying to you, who do you think you are? Remember, God says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Know your identity. You are already the righteousness of God in Christ. You are justified. You are righteous. You're in right standing with the Father. And you have every right to say, God, I belong to you. You, you promised that you would keep me. You promised to preserve me. You promised that I would see your power. You promised that if I seek first your kingdom, these things will be added to me. Okay, so, so this is what righteousness is. It means um, justification, the condition acceptable to God. You have to know that you are acceptable to God in Christ. You're accepted in the beloved. The next thing is these things will be added to you. It means to place additionally. Something's going to be added to you. To lay beside, to repeat. I like that one, to repeat. Testimony. To add again, to give more, to increase to proceed further, okay, so when we seek, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added to us, um, we're going to receive something from God, we're going to receive his miraculous intervention when we say, God, I'm seeking your way and not mine, only God can fulfill the promises that he has given you, this is very important to know this, only God can do what he said he was going to do um, in your life. Only God can open doors for you. Only God can provide for you supernaturally when you have no way out. Only God can heal someone who needs healing. Only God can perform a miracle. But he wants us, he's invited us to be involved in the fulfillment of those promises that he's given us. We, it's not enough just for you and I to read the Bible it's not enough just to say, that's great, and we collect our prophecies. We have to be people who are actively pursuing the instructions from the Spirit of God, so we're involved with God 
for those promises to come to pass. So, um, so example, you trust in God for a financial breakthrough. There's nothing you can do to make this happen. You can go and get a job on the side and work yourself, you know, unless God says, go and get an, a second or third job. Um, unless God gives you an instruction, um, you need to be saying, God, how do I pray this thing? And I want to say the place that God, God invites us to be involved in is our faith. That's it. Put your faith in me. Like stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Put your faith in me. Because you cannot get away from the Egyptians on your own. You can't run across the Red Sea. You can't turn anywhere and hide. Because the army that is chasing you is bigger than you on your own. But with God. You know, if you read that story of the Red Sea, um, maybe let's go there. Let's go there. It is um, the Red Sea. It was Exodus chapter 14. This is what he says. Um, Moses said to the people, it's from verse 13 onwards, Moses says to the people, do not be afraid. I mean, what a thing to say when you, the enemy that you've just escaped from is running after you. To, and not just to take you back to Egypt, but they want to take you out now. So do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you, seem to, whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. That's how you keep your peace, knowing God is going to fight for you. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Now you know what happened there. This is, a, this is Moses prophesying to the people, don't be afraid. You know what happened. They walked across on dry ground just as it was said. And God fought for them. It said the angel of God came and stood behind them. God did everything to protect his people that day. And even though today some of you are saying, God, I can't see any way out. God wants to do exactly the same for you. He wants to um, deal with the enemy that's chasing you down. He wants to deal with that enemy so that you don't see that enemy again. And you remember, you get to the other side of the Red Sea. And then they did a big dance and Miriam got her tambourine out. And they, they sang the, the horse and rider thrown into the sea, the Lord has triumphed and it was an amazing party they had on the other side of the Red Sea. But a lot of people think they're never going to get to the other side where they celebrate. And so it's difficult to stand on this side um, of the Red Sea with the, on the same side as the enemy pursuing you and, and God saying, hold your peace, stand still. But I want to say to you today, this is the time to stand still and expect to see the salvation of God. I really believe it. This is a time for you and I to see God move things out of the way and move things into place so that we walk across on dry ground and God deals with the enemy. But we need to be saying, God, how do I get involved with your plan so that those promises can come to pass? And the first way is your faith, seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that he can add all of those things to you. There was a, there's another way. When we talk about... Um, seek first the kingdom of God and having a paradigm shift. What are we expecting to find when we seek the kingdom of God? You, when you're seeking something, you expect to recognize it when you find it, don't you? So what are, when, when we say, okay, God, I'm going to seek the kingdom of God and your righteousness so things can be added to me, um, what do I expect to find on the other side? It's like an Easter egg hunt. You don't go looking for Easter eggs, not knowing what, they, what an Easter egg looks like, because then you will never find it. So the kingdom of God, I said this already, the ways of God, the kingship or the government of God, and then how things are done in heaven. When, when, you, when you find the kingdom of God in a situation, you find how things are done in heaven. There's no discouragement in heaven. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no lack in heaven. There's everything we need but over and above that we can ask or think or even request in our wildest dreams. That's why that scripture comes in all the time, because that's already in heaven. The over and above that we cannot understand with our limited thinking, and we need a shift to believe 
that God can answer our prayers and he wants to do those things. So when we say, God, I'm seeking your kingdom, we need to have the, the perspective or the mentality or the understanding or the revelation, whatever you want to call it, that God is going to do over and above what we're asking him to do when we seek his ways. The, here's a scripture that I, I posted up last night. I think late last night I found the scripture. This is the God we serve. This is the God who says, even though you're pursued by the enemy, even though you can't see any way out, this is who I am. This is who I want to be to you. It's Psalm 100 verse 5 in the Passion Translation. For God is always good and ready to receive you. He's so loving that it will amaze you, so kind that it will astound you. And he is famous for his faithfulness toward all. What testimonies have you heard recently? I'm going to share another one that I shared the other day. Everyone knows our God can be trusted, for he keeps his promises to every generation. Every generation, not just some generations. Yours isn't good enough, but them. I'll keep my promises to them. That word applies to you. Go look it up in, in, in um, the Passion Translation, Psalm 100 verse 5. Type it out, print it out, put it on your fridge, write it by hand, put it in your Bible so you see it every day. Make that something that you focus on. This is seeking the kingdom of God and finding the goodness of God always ready to hear you, to help you, to listen to you, to answer your prayers, to deliver you. You need to believe that. And so this paradigm shift that we need to have is to separate, to separate, um, separate ourselves from the lies Lies are the ways that the enemy um, will try and rob you. So we separate ourselves from that way of thinking, that I'm always going to be robbed. There's never going to be a breakthrough for me. We have to have a shift in our thinking and say, I refuse to go down the road of fear. I refuse to believe that. And instead, I'm going to seek the kingdom of God and his ways and believe that I'm righteous in Christ. And then... Um, this is what grace is. Grace is supernatural empowerment to live in a way you couldn't live before. And a, and a lot of us are still trying to live the way we did before we got saved. Or before we had a revelation of this good father that we serve. And we're still trying to make things happen and still sweating. And, and instead of walking in grace, that is supernatural empowerment to live in a way you never lived before. We have to live the higher life in God, the Zoe kind of life, the abundant life Jesus paid for. And it's the, the Zoe life is the God quality and quantity of life. This is our inheritance, the God life, God kind of life. So um, I, want, I said to you, this is, this is I said to you, um, ask, trusting God to do more than we can, we've seen before. Uh, maybe you saw, I shared this testimony, um, I, I didn't share it online, but I, I, I typed it out and I shared it, that there was a lady who was on one of the online sessions a couple of months ago, and I remember, I think I was speaking about healing, and I gave her a prophetic word online, I saw her name pop up and I gave her a word, and I said, God wants to heal you of something that has been harassing you for a long time, and you have a healing anointing. God wants to use your testimony and you're going to lay hands on the sick and see them healed. And so maybe about a week ago, she sent me a message saying that she remembered that word that I gave her and she'd been struggling with um, uh, something in her colon um, for 11 years. Uh, she gave me the word uh, ulcerite, uh, colonitis or something where you develop ulcers in your colon. And she'd been seeing the same um, doctor for 11 years, 10 or 11 years, and she said, um, she went for her annual checkup, and this doctor said, if I didn't, if I hadn't been treating you for the past decade, I wouldn't even think that you had this disease, there was no sign of it, I want to tell you, this is online, if God can do that for her, what, how much more can he do when we say, God, I believe, that's it, ulcerative colitis. Thank you, Elizabeth Welsh. I believe that God wants to do this again and again and again. And he wants to do more than that. That was great. Her name's Sipakazi. Um, I don't think she's online today. But God wants to do more of that. And so get your thinking changed that all you're going to do is stand on the banks of the Red Sea and, and hear the sound of the enemy pursuing you every single day. 
change, have a shift and change your thinking, all you need to do is place your faith in the faithfulness of God to deliver you. And you are going to see him do some amazing things and turn some things around and part the Red Sea for you and deal with that enemy that you've been dealing with. Just like um, this lady I'm talking about now, she had she dealt with this thing for 10 years. And then to have one word spoken online, that's the amazing thing. We shouldn't be amazed that God does things online. Um, I mean, people have been healed watching TV programs in the days before a pandemic. You know, they stretch their hand out to the TV and, and somebody pronounces a word of healing or gets a word, of, a word of knowledge of healing. God is still very busy and active. He's still the same God who parted the Red Sea and he wants to do that for you. So I'm going to pray for you before we leave today. I'm going to pray for healing. Let's do it now while I remember. So Lord, I thank you. If you are online now, or you're going to watch later. Um, if you need healing, you need to say, God, I thank you that you are my healer. I thank you that Jesus paid for my healing. And I believe that you can do over and above than I can ask or think or imagine or request in my wildest dreams that I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. Jesus already sent his word and healed me. And so I receive it today in Jesus' name. And I just speak healing. I believe there's somebody watching right now who's had a back issue. That's, it's like it's a, not your lower back, it's the top half of your back and your shoulder area. And you've been struggling, struggling with this issue for a long, long time. And you don't know what it is. There's a stiffness that happens in your back. And you just learn to live with it and to, you know, it's part of life now. And God wants to release that pain in your body today in Jesus' name. So just receive that. And you can let me know what happens with your, with your back. Um, in Jesus' name. Jesus is still the healer and he's alive and very active in our lives today. Um, okay, so let's go on quickly. I spoke to you about a paradigm shift. Okay, Marinda, that's me. Your back is healed from this moment forth in Jesus' name. And now you receive that in faith. And you thank God and then he deals with the enemy just like he dealt with the Egyptians and you will see them no more. Okay, that's a word for you, Marinda Stephanus. You will see the, the enemy in that area. You will see, you will have no more pain in Jesus' name. And there's just total freedom in your shoulders and your upper back area today in Jesus' name. Okay, so um, the other thing about a, a paradigm shift um, I've got in my notes here, Daniel chapter 3, um, it's, and I don't know why, but I'll say it anyway. It's the story of um, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they refused to bow down to the statue and they were thrown into the fiery furnace and they came out and they didn't, they, their hair was not singed by the fire and they didn't even smell like smoke. Now, um, I believe we need to expect this kind of thing. This, not to be thrown into a fiery furnace, please Jesus, but that we don't even smell like the, or, you know, or, or have any sign of the harassing of the enemy on our lives. We don't have the signs of anxiety and depression and worry, but we are able to stand still because we know we're going to see the salvation of God in the season. We know God is moving for us. We know he keeps us and preserves us and he upholds us. And so maybe go and read Daniel 3 later on yourself because I don't want to focus on that. Maybe that's a whole other message that just ended up in today's notes. But maybe somebody needed to hear it, that you feel like you're in this fiery furnace of worry and stress and the enemy's trying to take you out. And God says, don't worry. I'm with you. You're not even going to smell like smoke when you come out of this challenge. You're going to have a party like Miriam and the woman did on the other side of the Red Sea with your tambourine, and you're going to say, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed valiantly. We need to, this is our expectation. This is our, the shift in our thinking that needs to happen. You, can you see yourself? I, I did a whole session on this before. Can you see yourself in your answered prayers? Can you see yourself doing what God has said you're going to do? Or are you seeing yourself living in pain, living in worry, in stress, having lack? No, we've got to get out of that thinking and say, God, what do you say about it? What do the scriptures say? Because that's what our shift needs to be. 
No more underlying assumptions because the enemy is going to continue to plant seeds. So you assume, no, it's not going to happen you know, for me. It's always for somebody else. Let's get out of that way of thinking and become these believers who believe that God is going to do what he promised he was going to do. So the next thing is I said I'm going to speak to you about pivotal moments. And this is important. This is what a pivotal moment means. Um, very important and critical moment. A moment is described as a precise point in time. Pivotal moments are big moments and little moments of clarity that provide us with new perspectives and opportunities to change our lives. So when you hear that and you think, I've been trusting God for healing for 10 years and nothing has happened for me. And then you hear me talk about somebody who was healed online of something she struggled with for 11, 10, 11 years. And then your pivotal moment is, that can happen for me. It's possible for me. You're faced with a choice to, to say, I'm going to stay the way I am, being influenced and led by fear. Or today, the pivotal moment where I'm going to change and, and it's, it's a critical moment in time because I'm going to change and I'm going to expect the healing because God did it for somebody and he could do it for me. So the testimony rings the bell for you and you say, this is a pivotal moment. It's changed my perspective about what's possible with God. Have you ever heard people, um, they preach this message that sounds so, uh, it's amazing. It's, it sounds so simple, but at the same time, it's deep and it's powerful and it hits you in the spirit and you think, why did I never see that before? And they, and they make you see that anything is possible with God. They make you believe that God can do what you're trusting him to do. That's having, uh, when you receive a revelation about something that God wants to do for you, um, you, you hear somebody's testimony and you say, I, if God could do it for them, he can do it again. That is a pivotal moment. That's where things change for you. Your perspective changes and your faith level just rises. Now, this is what we need to be living, how we need to be living, where our faith level is rising and we refuse to be kept under by the lying lies of the enemy. So, um, so we position ourselves in faith in a pivotal moment. We say, okay, my perspective has been changed, but it's not good enough just for me to have a different perspective. Now, what do I do with that new perspective? Once again, it's faith. We position ourselves in faith and we say, God, what do you want me to do? And he might say to you, stand still and see the salvation of God. Just wait on me. I'm going to tell you when to take that first step into the Red Sea. And it's going to be scary. It's going to be hairy. And you're not going to know what to do. And you're going to take that first step towards your miracle and the Red Sea opens. So we obey the instructions every step of the way. And then the, the, in a pivotal moment when your perspective changes, this is important. We need to refuse to compromise. Because the offers are going to come from the enemy to compromise. Because the enemy knows that when you have had a shift, a paradigm shift, no more assumptions about what you think the enemy is able to do and what God can't do, and you have a pivotal moment where your perspective has changed because now you believe God can do it, the enemy is going to come and offer you some compromises. And that's where you refuse to compromise. You refuse to compromise to believe that you are not righteous in Christ that you are not worthy enough to, be, to receive this miracle. You refuse to believe those lies and you say, I know who I am in Christ. I know the authority I have. I know that I'm a threat because I have had a perspective change. And this is a critical moment for the church, I believe. It's a critical moment for you and I to have that shift in our thinking, to believe that we are about to see the miraculous outpourings of God, that we are about to see the glory of God being revealed through His church. And it's a critical moment in the church for us to position ourselves in faith to say, God, come and do it. We're seeking your kingdom. Your kingdom come, your will be done right here on earth as it is in heaven. So we refuse to compromise. And, and my story I want to bring to you is this 1 Samuel 17 where David is faced with Goliath. And he goes out there, he ran, he ran towards the battle and he prophesied to the opposition. Are you prepared to prophesy to that challenge that has been chasing you down? Are you prepared to say, this is what God said. I refuse to believe you anymore. Um, and so this is what David said. He said to Goliath, 
this day. I'm not turning to, to the scripture in the Bible. I've just got this one. It's verse 46. 1 Samuel 17, 46. David prophesied to him when he said, This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. Nice prophetic word. But he was speaking to the opposition. He was speaking to that intimidating giant Goliath who had intimidated the whole army of Israel, men of war, and little David, a shepherd boy who was not trained for war, but he knew God was in the battle with him. He knew, he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. He brought God into the battle. He raised the battle from a physical battle that he knew he couldn't win. He couldn't win if it was just physical strength, but he knew he needed to raise it to a supernatural battle because that Goliath was um, the enemy intimidating God's um, people. And so he, when he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord, go and read 1 Samuel 17. Uh, you, uh, uh, yeah, And he said, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. Do you have the faith to look at the challenge that, that you've been sitting under for years and years and say, this day I'm stepping away from you. This is my pivotal moment. This is my moment of faith. I refuse to compromise. And this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. And you take authority over that thing and you say, God, I'm seeking your kingdom now. Um, so I want to very quickly give you um, there are three, if you're trusting God to do something, um, there are three scenarios we can ask God um, to do. Uh, three scenarios where God delivers people, where he has before in the Bible. And the first one is the Red Sea situation where, where people are, hearing the sound of the enemy and and this red sea story is an amazing thing to keep referring back to that, that god can deliver his people god can do the um perform the most difficult thing where we have no way out and then god comes and does it the red sea the other one is god wants to restore to you things that the enemy has taken from you and he wants to restore to you over and above the things that you've lost and the story is in 2 Kings chapter 8. I think I'm going to turn there now. 2 Kings chapter 8. I want to encourage you today that God is able to um, restore, um, protect you, preserve you, heal you, keep you. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 8. There's the Shunammite woman in 2 Kings chapter 4 who um, receives her prophetic word. Uh, it's got to happen. Uh, Elisha gives her a prophetic word and she has a baby and then she has the baby restored to life and all, a whole lot of great things happen. But then um, in 2 Kings chapter 8, it says, yeah, Elisha spoke to the woman whose son he had restored to life. This woman knew the restoration power of God, whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise and go, you and your household, and stay wherever you can, for the Lord has called for a famine and furthermore, it will come upon the land for seven years. So he knows there's a famine coming and he gives this woman a way out. You go and stay there for seven years. So she, she arose and did according to the saying of the man of God. I'm just going to get through this very quickly because we almost finished here. So she went with her household and dwelt in the land of the Philistines seven years. It came to pass at the end of seven years that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines and she went to make an appeal to the king for her house and for her land. Then the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, this is the timing of God, tell me please all the great things Elisha has done just at this moment in time. Talk about a pivotal moment. Now it happened as he was telling the king how he had restored the dead to life that there was the woman whose son he had restored to life, appealing to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed a certain officer for her, saying, Restore all that was hers and all the proceeds of the field from the day that she left the land until now. This was total restoration. After being away for seven years, she just happens to come into the same place where they're talking about her situation and her son being restored to her back to life. And everything is, a, a decision is made right there by the king. Give her everything. Give her, her the proceeds of the field. 
It's like back pay for seven years. She wasn't even there. Back pay. Her land, her house, and the proceeds of the field from the day she left until now. You know, God is able to do that for you. I want to encourage you today. You may think you've been robbed in the area of healing. You've been robbed in the area of vision. You've been robbed in all kinds of things. Maybe real inheritances financially. And God is able to do that. But you need to be saying to Him, God, I need a shift in my thinking. I've been living under this expectation for so long that this is how it's going to be. This is my lot in life. And today God is saying to you, he's, He wants to restore to you what, the, what has been stolen from you by the enemy. You know, in Joel, restore to you the years that the locust has, has eaten, has stolen from you. Um, so God is a God of restoration. And when we have our thinking changed in that area, we begin to look for it. We begin to seek after it. Just as we seek the kingdom, the kingdom way is that God would restore to you. The God's, God's ways are not that you will be robbed for the rest of your life. God's ways are that you walk in restoration, that you receive back over and above what the enemy has stolen from you. And so, um, yeah, uh, there is another one here. There's uh, cancellation of debt. How many of you would like all your debts canceled today? We, Rory and myself had, um, and, and we know, uh, just let me say this to you, in Deuteronomy, it says here, verse 15, it says, at the end of every seven years, you shall grant a release of debt. And this is the form of the release. Every creditor who has lent anything to his neighbor shall release it. He shall not require it of his neighbor or his brother because it is called the Lord's release. Cancellation of debt. Everything that was borrowed, it's just released. The Lord's release. And I want to say to you, we know that this is some symbolic of, of the release of uh, forgiveness in Christ and the grace we walk in, be released into freedom and out of bondage. But I want to say to you that God is able to take the debt that you have and, and cancel it in one moment. Um, I was praying for somebody. Um, I'll finish with this. I was praying for somebody uh, the other day, and, and I, I heard myself, when it comes to about financial things, and I heard myself say, God, you can do anything. I was driving in my car, and I was saying, God, you can do anything. When it comes to having a, a shift in thinking, I always pray, when I'm praying for someone, I always say, Lord, help them to see from your perspective, that because that's where our faith comes from. Then we can get involved with God's plan and we can say, God, I know you want to fulfill this promise. And now that I've had a change in my thinking and I see from your perspective, then I can pray the way God wants me to pray. But if you're praying from a place of, I'm so stressed about this thing, then you, you end up praying those begging prayers and we don't know what to pray. We run out of things to pray. So I always pray, God, help this person to, to see from your perspective because yours is always positive. You're always able to do things that we can't do. Only you can do this thing. And then I heard myself say to God, there are three scenarios here. This is what you can do. Um, the one thing is you can cancel debt. In one moment, God can give somebody favor with the people you owe money to. And in one moment, no explanation, they can say, okay, I release you from that debt. The Lord's release. I release you from that debt. Okay, so, so I said, God, you can do that. Nothing, there's nothing. The, the Deuteronomy scripture is Deuteronomy 15, 1 uh, and 2. Um, oh, well, let me just read verse 6 as well. It says, For the Lord your God will bless you just as he promised you. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. You shall reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over you. That's a promise to God's people. Go read Deuteronomy 15, 1 to 6. So, okay, so the first thing was um, God can cancel debt. Um, the second one was um, that God can restore. Um, God, you've done it before. I read it in the Bible. This was me speaking to God. I read in the Bible that there was the Shunammite woman who walked in, in this, um, right at, at the right time. It was not coincidence. And there the king was asking about her and she walked in and the king says, restore everything to her worth back pay. Everything, the proceeds from the land. God can do that for his people today. 
And then this, the third scenario was out of our own experience when it comes to um, cancellation of debt. And I think the reason I'm speaking to you about cancellation of debt and restoring all of this is because when we have a shift of thinking, we begin to believe that God wants us to prosper. And we realize I've lived under this lack, victim, poverty mentality without realizing it. God wants me to prosper. Um, and so I began to say, God, you did it. Um, you know, you've done it in the Bible. Um, so I want to ask you that you would speak to people supernaturally. Now, and, and you would, uh, you know, speak to this person and say, contact so-and-so and say, God spoke to me that I need to bless you with a big amount of money. And it's enough to pay off the debt. Now, Rory and I have experienced this a, a few times. I remember one night, many years ago, Rory and I were sitting in the lounge watching TV or something and the phone rang in the days of the landline. Who remembers those days when the landline rang? And it was a pastor from upcountry in South Africa. And he said to Rory, how are your finances? He actually said, how is your finances? Um, and Rory, I heard Rory say, well, yeah, they're okay because we don't, um, we don't advertise when we have a need. We go to God um, with our needs. And so, um, so this pastor said to Rory, well, God spoke to me that I need to bless you. And it was a big amount of money that we really needed. And God spoke to him. Then we had another case where somebody phoned us again, still in the days of the landline. Maybe we need to get a landline again so that we could see these miracles more often. Maybe that's been the key. Um, so um, I remember this, another man uh, phoned and Rory answered the phone. Um, and I had a nice chat about, you know, a catch up about what was going on. And this man said to Rory, God has spoken to me that I need to ask you, what are the debts that you owe? Now, we didn't have huge debts. We had a bond, we got a bond to pay. And in those days, we were paying car, a car and a few little things that it was a lot back then. I'm talking maybe 19 years, maybe. And, um, and this man said, well, God's given me an amount. And it was the amount we needed to pay our debt at that time. Not the house, but the, the regular debt. And he put that money into our account because God spoke to him. Now, when you hear that this happened, you believe that God will do it again. And I want to encourage you today, in this time where the enemy is squeezing people financially, where people have run dry in their provision. And they, they can't see any way out. God is the same God. He's not a respecter of persons. He's the same God. He, what he did for me, what Rory and I, he could do for you. But are you willing to have the, the shift and the perspective, his perspective, that he doesn't want you to live in poverty and anxiety and discouragement and stress, and he wants you to live in freedom? You know, we are supposed to live in freedom, enjoying life called to do what we called to do, you are, every single one of us, called to do what we, we called to do, helping other people, supporting other people, um, without the stress that the enemy is trying to keep God's people in. Um, so I want to encourage you today that God is able to do that, that you're trusting him for. So I'm going to pray, and then we are going to end off. Um, I just want to see Jane, thank you so much for putting the scriptures up again. And I see Jenny Hardesty is here, um, Mandy Purcell, Tertia Stain, Kathy Purden, nice to see you again. And I want to say to you that um, God is very busy and he is inviting you to step into this place with him where we are not just collectors of promises or collectors of scriptures that we put up on the fridge and, and all over the place, but we're walking in these things because we've had that shift in our thinking and we say that belongs to me. I'm going to possess the promised land by putting my faith in the faithfulness of God and in what he has promised me. And I'm going to get, um, you know, become uh, uh, vigilant about it. And I'm going to wage warfare with the promises about, uh, that he's made me. And I'm not going to sit back and say, if God said it, he can do it. He wants us involved in it and he wants us to step out into that place of faith where we see him part the Red Sea for us. So today, Lord, I pray for your people. I thank you, Lord, that song that Matthew started us off with. If you, if you only join in later, go back to the beginning 
and, and just put that song on and close your eyes and say, God, I need a perspective change today. I need a paradigm shift. I need a pivotal moment in changing my perspective. And I want to get rid of the underlying assumptions that I've been living by and, and believe that you're going to do over and above for me, that you're going to heal, that you are going to deliver me, that you are going to restore to me what the enemy has stolen from me, and that you are going to, I'm even trusting for cancellation of debt, in Jesus' name. And so, Lord, I pray for your people. Go back to the beginning and just listen to that song, um, Lord, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. That was the song. This is what we all need in this time. I want to pray for every single person who's struggling with fear because of, of the, the reports of people getting sick around them and, and struggling with issues. And um, so I pray, Lord, that we would um, have the vision to see things the way you do um, in Jesus' name. So I want to say thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you coming on on a Tuesday afternoon when I only gave you a little bit of notice. And um, Thursday, the time might be a little bit different. I've got a few things happening on Thursday. But I will keep you updated. It might be a last-minute thing. It won't be at 10 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. Um, it might be later on in the morning or in the afternoon. So I will keep you updated. I promise you I will. We will do E-Thursday. Um, and I will keep you updated. So I want to say I love you all. I really appreciate you all. Um, you have become part of my life, uh, my online community support system. I know you pray for me, and I pray for you. And um, thank you so much for today. So be blessed. Be strong. Remember, you, you may hear the sound of the enemy pursuing you, but let God's voice be bigger and louder for you today. So have a fantastic Tuesday. See you soon.